Hello again. We're going to start off by going through a few basic variables that we're going to be discussing throughout the semester. Basic macroeconomic variables such as outputs, consumption, and capital, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. So this is sort of a basic glossary of macroeconomic terms that we're going to use as we ease into the subject of dynamic programming. First of all, at least to begin with, we will work with the abstraction that there is one good in this economy. And the production of this good is going to be called output. We're going to label it Y. So YT is going to be production of the one thing, the one final good, the one thing that enters GDP at a particular date, T. Now, this output, Yt, may have more than one use. One use would be consumption. Consumption refers to goods that are used up by households during the period of interest, T. The other possible use of output is investment. And this, in general, is going to mean goods that are put towards the accumulation of productive resources. The normal way of thinking about productive resources is capital. So we will usually label capital with the letter K. And the way we think about capital in the data is that these are physical resources that we ourselves create, such as machinery or buildings. So usually you define capital into machinery and typically the name for buildings is structures because it goes beyond what you might think of as being house or a factory. It could be an oil rig, for example, or a bridge. So capital includes machinery and structures. And sometimes machinery is referred as equipment so just keep that in mind. Now, the amount of machinery that we have online right now is not equal to the amount of investment because of course we may have machines that are still working that were created earlier. So the machines that are working at a particular date right now should be equal to the machines that were added to it in the past period, plus the machines that were online in the previous period that did not break down. And it is going to be a very common assumption that what happens is that machines break down at a constant rate. If we make this rate delta, which we'll call the rate of depreciation, then that means that what is left over is one minus delta of the previous capital stock. Next, we have to think about two things. Where does output come from? The output must come, excuse me, from the use 
of capital. So that means that y t has to equal some sort of function of k t. In other models, there may be other productive resources, but we're starting from a simple framework. We'll introduce other possibilities such as labor intermediates and so on in later videos. The next thing we want to think about is how much, or rather the way in which people care about consumption. And so we are going to just have agents be endowed with a utility function, which describes how much they care about consumption. So that means that we're going to have two very key functions here. One is the production function F, which tells us how the agents turn resources into output. And another function U, which tells us how much the agents care about consumption. Now, implicit in this problem is the idea that capital changes over time. And that of course implies that we must be living in an environment where consumption does not occur only at one date. The agents don't just care about what happens on one day. They care about a stream of consumption and therefore their decision about investment versus consumption involves a decision about the future. And for that, we will need to specify not just how agents care about their utility at any particular date, but how they balance utility across various dates. Now, the way we typically do this is by saying that, um, first of all, of course, consumption is something that must be defined at different dates. Let's say if t goes from zero to one to two to three to infinity, then consumption occurs at all those dates and we can label them based on that date, c0, c1, c2, and so on. We need to figure out a way in which the agent balances the utility of consuming, let's say today, if today is time zero, versus tomorrow, and so on into a future. The way we're typically going to do that is to say that the agent cares about the weighted sum of utility at each date, where the weights are as follows. The weights are going to be an exponentially decreasing function of the date. This number here, beta, we're going to refer to as the discount factor, and it just tells us how much weight a future utility gives us compared to utility now. For this to work, of course, the key assumption is that this discount factor, beta, must be somewhere between zero and one. That's what we need to guarantee, that these weights are decreasing over time. So these are the basic elements of the models that we're going to be discussing in the coming week or two. And what we'll discuss beyond that will often be generalizations of this. For example, where production uses resources other than 
just capital, for example, your time, your labor, and where utility does not only take into account your consumption, but also takes into account other things, such as leisure, the time that you're not working. 